the Headwater Science Center live stream. Today we're going to be talking about probably one of the most successful groups of living animals ever to live. Um, and yeah, before we get started, uh, remember Headwater Science Center, we're open seven days a week. Monday through Saturday, we're open 9.30 to 5. And Sunday, we're just open 1 to 5 for a brief little bit. Uh, and coming up this week, and at the end of this, I'll remind you guys, we have a special event uh, on the 26th of March, so next Saturday. But yes, today we are going to talk about trilobites, uh, possibly the most successful group of animals to exist in Earth's history. So, let's see if we can zoom in a little bit. Uh, today I actually brought something from my house. Uh, this is something I got at the Smithsonian Museum. And this is an actual trilobite. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer in on this thing. Uh, maybe just a little bit further. Just... There we go. There we go. Okay, so this is a trilobite. They are a very unique type of animal, and they are entirely extinct nowadays. You might be wondering why I just referred to them as one of the most successful groups of animals. And there's a reason for that. So we're going to zoom back out just a little bit, and then... this. So trilobites were... Around on Earth, they evolved roughly 521 million years ago and went extinct just about 252 million years ago. Um, just for reference, that is a group of animals that dates back to the Cambrian and goes extinct right before the Mesozoic starts in, and goes extinct in Permian mass extinction, which is the largest mass extinction in Earth's history. We're going to get back to that. These animals were on Earth for roughly 300 million years in some capacity. Humans have been around for about a couple hundred thousand, I think, as Homo sapiens, but other species of human and upright apes have been around for maybe three to five million years. Um, dinosaurs were on Earth for roughly 150 million years. Uh, just for a sense of scale, is that trilobites were on Earth long, about double the amount of time that dinosaurs were. <laughs> and they get their name, uh, trilobite, from the three lobes of their bodies. Uh, they also have three segments. You can zoom in on that top drawing with the green. and So they have the two plural lobes, which are the left and right side, and the central, or axial lobe which you can actually see pretty well on the fossil here and these lobes would be these parts of their midsection otherwise known as their thorax and trilobites were obviously kingdom animalia and some of the earliest really successful ones uh phylum arthropoda and this is the first arthropod we've actually looked at in these live streams and class trilobita um and there are no living representatives of Trilobita around today. Uh, but generally, they were quite diverse and quite successful. Trilobites did everything from sort of bottom feeding, just sort of foraging around for whatever fell from above in the water column, to actually probably eating small worms and other animals at the bottom of the rivers and ocean they lived in. All the way to being herbivorous, some of them eating algae. Uh, we can zoom back out, I think. Uh, but yeah, so tri trilobites were an aquatic animal. Um, some of them could burrow, and others actually evolved the ability to swim for limited distances. And trilobites are one of the first animals to evolve a complex eye, uh, which in themselves is quite crucial in the development of animal life. Trilobites, some of the, many of them had um, what are called compound eyes. Think of the eyes that uh, insects like dragonflies have today. And from what we can tell, they grew in stages. So molt stages, sort of, um, sort of like some insects do today, like grasshoppers. And these stages are called instars, which are basically milestones in their growth and maturation. So 
slight changes in their body plan and stuff like that. They had a large number of legs under the body. And a lot of the fossils, like the one I have here, is very likely simply a shed exoskeleton. Uh, these, these animals did shed their exoskeletons periodically so they could grow, much like living day arthropods. And they survived four or five mass extinctions, depending on how you qualify a mass extinction, which is really impressive. It took the Permian mass extinction, which was the largest mass extinction in Earth's history, which wiped out approximately 90% of all living things, plants, animals, fungi, on Earth. It took that to wipe out trilobites entirely. Uh, and trilobites, as I said, were a very diverse group. Some of them were, much like the trilobite fossil I have here, relatively plain. Others had large bulbs, spikes, uh, protrusions from their exoskeleton. Some, and some of them had antenna that were more specialized than others. They pretty much tried everything you can do with an exoskeleton, to some degree. And again, they are one of the most common fossils in the world, and they are found throughout the world. Um, there are about 20,000 recognized species of trilobite in 10 different orders. Um, 20,000 species is a lot. Uh, most of them don't even have common names. Um, these animals were found everywhere from Siberia to Brazil, uh, California, all the way over to Japan, um, all throughout the world. So that was a, a global distribution, um, which is remarkable when you think of it. Um, and very likely they formed a base of a lot of food chains. Um, let's see, what else do we have here? Actually, this is something I want to look at. Uh, if you want to zoom in on that time scale right there at the bottom. And this is just something I drew up, just a, kind of a crude sort of sense of time. So the Cambrian starts around 541 million years ago. And just about 20 million years later, trilobites evolved. And trilobites are an animal that are thought to have evolved their thick exoskeletons and complex eyes as a response to some early predators evolving. Uh, the first animals to actually start predating on other species. Uh, those shells would have protected them from the bites, uh, and those eyes would have allowed them to see a threat coming. Um, we're going to just hit each of these milestones. The Ordovician starts roughly 485 million years ago, and trilobites are still going strong. Same with at the beginning of the Silurian, roughly 444 million years ago. The Devonian, uh, there are still trilobites around. They make up a huge part of the fossils found from the Silurian, uh, around 419 million years ago. The Carboniferous still have trilobites, roughly 359 million years ago. 299 million years ago, at the beginning of the Permian, trilobites are still around. There was a notable dip in the diversity and species count around the, this era. And just 252 million years ago, at the Permian-Triassic extinction, 90% of all living species went extinct. And unfortunately, the last trilobites also happened to go extinct around that time, too. And again, that is a span of roughly 300 million years that these animals existed. They really are life's first big success story and are almost unrivaled. Um, some of the only groups of animals that really do rival them are animals that are still with us today, actually. Mm -hmm. Stuff like jellyfish and starfish. Very, very ancient groups of animals. Um, and generally, trilobites are something that I think are underrated. They are quite ubiquitous. You probably have seen them all over in art and stuff. And oftentimes they get compared to a modern arthropod, uh, the horseshoe crab. You can zoom out just a little bit. Just a little bit. There we go. And horseshoe crabs live a similar lifestyle to what we think trilobites live. They tend to feed on the bottom of the ocean and just kind of move around the shell, keeps them nice and safe from predators. 
And they have, actually, if you notice, a nice little set of, com of uh, complex compound eyes there. We're going to get this guy. I'm going to zoom in on him, probably. You can see this little bump here is actually an eye. But yeah, so generally, um, trial bikes are something that, again, there are some things kind of like them today, but life has yet to see a massive group of animals like this truly be so ubiquitous in the fossil record. These fossils are in fact so common. This one I have right here, I didn't find this somewhere out in like the wilderness. I didn't find it in a fossil bed. I bought this at the Smithsonian. Um, they are so common, they're willing to sell them in gift shops, which most fossils are not that numerous and not that like plentiful in the variety where, yeah, we'll sell a bunch of these. Uh, fossils in general are quite rare, uh, meaning that you don't want to sell those. You don't see them often selling uh, Tyrannosaurus rex teeth or uh, mammoth bones because those are, despite the general ubiquity of the nails, how well we know them, every bit of material is important. With trilobites, there is an excess of well-preserved, good material, and that is something that I think is rather impressive. We can zoom the camera all the way back out, I think. So, uh, I mentioned that, that we have an event going next Saturday. Uh, we are picking back up again with prehistoric painting nights. And back this Saturday, uh, we are going to be, if you want to sign up for the event, you can call or email. Uh, we have trial lights. And I will get this closer to the camera. So you can come in and paint your own trial light. And they will be kind of little articulatable ones like this. And just to remind you all, it is it's $15 per animal painted. So if you're coming in with, let's say, uh, you have two kids and each want to paint one, that'd be $30 total. Uh, if you only have one kid, it'd be $15. Um, but yeah, we will walk you through painting them, teach you a little bit more about trilobites. We'll go over sort of what colors they might have been. And also just answer any questions that you might have from watching this live stream or just questions you have just on your own. Um, and let me real quick. So prehistoric painting night is going to be on March 26th. Um, and you can RSVP uh, with this email address. It's a slightly older poster, but still has all the information on it. 